Hello. I have one very battered looking sketchbook here and I have been thinking of ideas of ways to fill my sketchbook. I've got five ideas and we've got 10 pictures. So let's get into it. Idea number one sounds a bit counterintuitive, but if you're really stuck for ideas, it's always helpful to go and just do something else. And for me, it meant going outside while the sun was shining and sorting out this really messy piece of garden which we've neglected over a couple of years, especially during lockdown, and it really needs sorting. You can see all those old leaves that have fallen down and it's just a total mess. So we decided to tidy all of this up and make it look a bit nicer. <laughs> There's nothing like a bit of manual labor to get the creative ideas flowing. In this case, I was about to spread chicken poo onto the ground so that we can plant tomatoes in the spring. But of course, the cats were so curious by it and it must have smelled really strongly because Gandalf would not leave them alone for ages. <laughs> and of course, Trixie had to come and see what was going on as well. We also found some old pots lying around the garden and created this little display by the bird bath. I even found some flowers to put in there, including Rebecca. Well, I had to have that one. Not quite the right spelling, but close enough. So once I'd planted all of my flowers, it was at this point where I had the brilliant idea to do this video. And flowers were my inspiration. So all of my pictures I'm going to do today are floral based. So not only did doing something else inspire a whole bunch of drawings, but I also got the garden tidied up. Hooray! So now it's all ready to plant tomatoes in the spring, and the herb patch, while not finished yet, is nice and tidy by comparison to what it was, and I'll plant some more herbs over time. We also got out in the sunshine, including the cats, and it was just really nice to do some physical activity out there. So onwards to the first artworks. So for this first page spread, I was inspired by the pansies in that pot. Because they looked so pretty in the sunshine, I took a few photos for reference as I didn't really want to have to sit and draw everything outside. I need to be in my studio to record this. And then I got in with drawing the outline just with a pencil and then getting some of my watercolor paints to paint this first pansy. I mean, you can use any art supplies that are inspiring you. This is my little set of Holbein watercolors, and I just thought the colors would be perfect for this. I ended up using this actually for most of the pictures in the sketchbook, and I kept this pretty sketchy. I painted the pansy quite detailed, and then I just added in an abstract background to indicate the other flowers and leaves. And then I let that one dry for a while and moved on to the other page, which is drawing the entire pot of flowers. So this one took a little bit longer. I wasn't trying to be completely perfect, but I just really wanted to draw all of the pots and the bird bath in there. Then I got in with the same paints. I also added in some of my art spectrum ones because I had a sepia there that was much darker than the other browns I had. And I just went to it. I wasn't trying to be perfect here or make everything completely realistic. I just want to get the idea of the pots and the flowers. I mean, it kind of looks like it, but it's more of a stylized thing, which is what I tend to prefer anyway. And after all, it is a sketchbook. It is meant to be sketching, <laughs> not amazing, stunning works of art. I mean, I know some people do, but I am usually far too impatient for that. I was just having a really good time relaxing and getting some color down into my sketchbook. As you can see, my page spread is already covered. I usually don't bother taping the edges because I like to have messy edges in my sketchbook. As you can see here, it just feels more authentic and sketchy to me rather than having all of these beautifully taped off borders. I know it looks amazing. I've seen other people do it and I just never can be bothered doing it myself. <laughs> so there we go. Pretty much for all of these page spreads, I worked on both pictures simultaneously because when you use watercolor, obviously you need to have some time to dry before you can do other layers and add details in. So while one side was drying, I could be working on the other one and it was much faster for me to record. Otherwise, it would have taken probably twice as long to get all of these pictures done. And I used a little bit of pen just for some general outlining and some white pen as well. Actually, quite a lot of white pen because I just ended up going over everything to add highlights. And this is what I ended up with, directly inspired from doing something else. 
Idea number two is to choose a theme. Now I'm working in page spreads, so I was thinking of two pictures that can go on either side, or you can have multiple pages. And for this, I have a sub theme within a theme. So the main one is flowers, and my sub theme is camellia because our camellia flowers are really blooming at the moment and I thought it would be fun to paint these. I snapped a couple of pictures on my phone of individual flowers and on the left side I'm drawing one of the pink camellias, on the right side I decided to draw one of the cream coloured camellias. And I'm using color race pencils here because then I can use matching colours and not have graphite lines showing through on the final drawing. I grabbed out some of my watercolour pencils, these are Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura, and I drew over the entire flower with them quite sketchily, and once I finished drawing it out I went in with some plain water on a brush to turn it into a watercolour effect. I mean, I could have just used the watercolour paints, I'm kind of wishing I did because the pencils went a bit funny on this paper. I'm just not very good with watercolour pencils in general. I do just try using them every so often, but you can see it was creating some really harsh lines. And I wasn't entirely happy with the result, so in the end I did go in with some of that watercolour and you could see I actually have a brilliant pink watercolour, which is one of the reasons I chose the Holbein set because I knew I had this colour in here and this particular photo of the flower was what inspired me to pull the Holbein paints out in the first place. So as you can see, different things will inspire different ideas. It's always quite funny that way. And then I drew in the cream coloured Camellia, but of course being cream it's very hard to get any kind of value and the pencils I used went pretty yellow. Now these pale camellias actually have a different look to them, their petals are more cabbagey looking or something and I just made a total mess of it. As you can see it looks like a brain so I left it for a while to dry and I went back to the pink one and just painted a nice bright blue background around it because it was a blue sky day and I was inspired by the pink against the blue, such a pretty colour. Then I decided cream camellia was now going to be a yellow one and a big blob it is. So letting that dry again I went in with a deeper red to get some of the values in the petals of the pink camellia. I really like how this painting turned out and I was able to get quite a lot of detail in it and cover most of those harsh lines with the softer watercolour paint. Going into this other one, I painted a darker blue around it and as you can see my yellow flower is now a blob flower. <laughs> it was such a mess and I was just thinking what on earth can I do to fix this? So by now I'd given up on the reference image and I was just making it up. I went in with some orange colour just to get some suggestions of petals and this one turned out to be an imagination flower. So here we have a camellia and or imagination flower theme. <laughs> Idea number three, don't be afraid to use reference photos. You can take your own photos or you can use one of the many, many websites out there which provide free reference photos. These are royalty free and you can use them for anything as long as you're not claiming the photo as your own. I'll put links in the description below of some resources that I use. I tend to go to Pixabay, but recently I found a Facebook group called Free Reference Photos for Artists and it is awesome. Both of the photos I'm using today are referenced from there and I have credited the photographers in the description as well. In this page spread I used both of the photos that I've just showed. On the left side I've got the flower with the monarch butterfly and on the right hand side I have the other flower with all of its really neat petals. I just drew them out quickly in pencil, they don't have to be perfect, you get the idea. And my primary tools of choice for this one are the Faber-Castell watercolour pens. They're those big fat marker pens and they're really beautiful, I like them a lot. They don't blend very well on this paper so I did end up supplementing some of it with some watercolour over the top. I think I used watercolour in just about all of these ones <laughs> but you can see that purple just does not want to blend with any of the other colours and I thought I'd made a horrendous mistake here but they did eventually blend out and it's not too bad in the end. I just love the vibrancy of these pens, they're really lovely to use. They are water based, not alcohol based, so they go well in this book and they did not leak through onto the other side which is always a pet peeve of mine when it comes to alcohol based pens as they will just soak th straight through especially on watercolour paper like the book I'm using here. This sketchbook by the way is the Primrosia 
sketchbook. It's got a dot grid on it, but it is watercolour paper and I'm really enjoying using it. It's 160 pages though and it's taking me ages to get through it, so this is another reason why I wanted to do this video, so that I would be able to fill a whole bunch of pages in it. I also draw off camera as well and I've got quite a lot of other artworks in here. So I really enjoyed these two reference photos. They're lovely and bright. That's the reason I picked them. In my off time, I'll quite often just scroll through picture websites and save out those that inspire me or catch my eye for future reference. So when I'm really uninspired, I can go through my folders and just see if something will grab my attention and give me an idea of something to paint. That's another way to help yourself if you're feeling uninspired is to just keep a library of reference images that you can go back to. I almost always will find something. I'm using a bit of white ink here for the Monarch Butterfly and I went over some of it just to add a bit more depth of colour. And once again, I was just working on both pictures at the same time, alternating between them to let the other dry. And of course I had to paint a background. I find it really difficult to leave white space in a sketchbook. I always have to cover it with something. So I picked this really bright marine blue color and I think it actually makes it really stand out. For the other flower, I decided to go a much darker background, but I didn't do the whole thing. I started off with a really deep indigo at the bottom and then I faded it into the top of the page so it is a little bit lighter up the top and I think that was more effective than painting the whole thing in a dark colour. A few highlights and I am done with this page spread. I'm happy with how this turned out. I really loved the butterfly especially. And even though the petals on the right hand flower are a bit lopsided, it's a nice colourful page so I'll take that win. <laughs> My fourth idea is monochrome, so creating pictures that are only in one colour or in black and white, which is grayscale. I decided to do one of each, so the left hand side I went for purple, and this was from a reference photo I'd seen, it really inspired me, I just loved that it was all one colour, such a soft, beautiful purple as well, and it's a very simple picture. I drew it with a purple color race pencil and then I painted over everything with a very light purple wash and I'm letting that sit to dry while I go on to my other picture which is a rose that I'm going to do in black and white or grayscale if you prefer. So I used a gray color race pencil for this because I didn't want to use the black one and make the lines too harsh. And this is a reference photo of Pixabay. It's originally a red rose but what I did was download it and put it into Photoshop and switch it over to black and white. So I was able to reference the different highlights and shades. And as you can see, I completely stuffed it up. I didn't record it. So here's my first layer of that black and white rose. I used a Payne's Gray watercolor for that. And then I'm going back over to the purple flower and adding in more concentrated levels of watercolor paint, just using the same purple for all of it. This was really fun to do and it's a great exercise in just looking at values in a picture which arguably are more important than the colour of something. And sometimes it's really hard to think of colours to paint. So just by choosing one colour or going with a black and white theme then you don't have to worry about that and you can just focus on getting those wonderful contrasting shadows and highlights. So I went over it again with another layer of Payne's Grey and I was trying to be a bit more precise with my details on this one. So I think out of everything the rose took me the longest one to paint. But I really enjoyed this and it was really fun having it black and white. It's not something you really think of sometimes, you know, a rose is meant to be this bright colour. But when you turn it into grayscale, it's easier to see a lot more of those details in the petals. And it's a great way to learn just some of the shapes that a rose petal will have. Mine aren't perfect by any means, but I was pretty happy with how it turned out in the end. And because it was just looking a bit flat, I did go in with some white ink to add in highlights. They weren't necessarily on the picture itself, but I just like to add them in. And then I didn't want to paint the background on this one, but I also didn't want to leave it completely blank. So I added in some sparkly watercolor just to get a bit more iridescence into it. And here are the finished monochromatic paintings. 
And my fifth and final idea, if all else fails, use stickers and stamps. Sometimes you have days where you just can't think of anything or you don't feel inspired at all to create any artwork, in which case sometimes using stickers and stamps can really just add colour to a page and inspire creativity when it is too hard to come up with an original idea. Of course one needs to have a stash of stickers and stamps, which you know I do, so I just grabbed a whole bunch of stuff out of my crafting stash, continuing with the floral theme, but I just really liked the look of that mandala. And I'm using an archival ink here, which is waterproof once it's dry, because as you can probably imagine, I'm going to paint over some of these with watercolor paints. Then I went through my sticker book and found some pretty flowers and stuck those in. And that purple flower is from a greeting card that I had cut up because I keep all my greeting cards. I like to use the pictures. It was not sticking at all. So I went around with some butterfly washi tape that I also had. Because I'd done the monarch butterfly on a previous page, I figured that butterflies could be added in with my flower theme. And once I'd stuck stuff down, I started going in with the paint. I wasn't thinking at this point, I was just putting colours on there and enjoying the process of painting on the paper. Not worrying about having to draw things or come up with my own ideas. Just using the ideas that were in front of me to throw colour on. And this was probably, out of all of them, my most favourite page. I just switched off and listened to music as I painted this. I was trying to think what colours I should paint that mandala. And in the end, I went with a primary triad. So I've got a red, a yellow and a blue. And I made it like a colour wheel. It turned out actually really well. I was pleased with it. So I started off really lightly and then I went in with darker colours so I could blend them together without turning it into total mud. And because I just really loved the colours of those three, I decided to paint all of the background and I got really carried away with this. The whole page by the end of it is so busy. <laughs> it's just ridiculous with colour, but I just love it so much. In case you're wondering which three colours I used here, they are Pyrrol Red, Lemon Yellow and Peacock Blue. They work so well together. I really like the Holbein paints. I think they're lovely to use and I do quite often get this set out to use in my sketchbook. I have 20 colours which I've managed to squeeze into one of those pans that are designed technically for 12 colours, but you can always fit more in. <laughs> As you can see, it just got into a total mess at this point, and you really can't see the stamps very well. So I even painted over the card with some of the purple paint, and I went around everything with a very messy black line. It just would not go around those stickers properly. I kept drawing on the sticker accidentally. So in the end, I gave up trying to be neat and I drew sketchy black outlines around everything. This actually worked quite well and now it's easier to see all of the designs against that crazy background. But I am just happy with how this worked out. I drew some hearts on the top. I just couldn't stop adding things to this page. And that's the great thing about using stickers and things that it will quite often inspire other ideas. And so that's why I included this one because now I have this wonderfully colorful page spread and it is one of my favorites in my sketchbook. Here are my five page spreads. It's so sparkly. I really like this one. Ah, it's so busy and there's so much colour on it, but I had the best time with this one. I really did. It was just nice just sticking stuff on the page. As you can see, this purple flower looks almost the same as that. So was that deliberate? Ah, only I shall know that. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some inspiration to get into your own sketchbook and do something in there. At least fill out one page spread. <laughs> so let me know what you thought in the comments. Which is your favourite painting out of all of them? Or page spread if you like. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. And I will see you all again in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye.